Welcome to the Why on Earth Community Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Perry. And today we're visiting with Ryan Lewis, the founder and CEO of Earth Hero. Hey, Ryan. How you doing? Great. How you doing? I'm doing great. No complaints. Just Love another it. beautiful day here in Boulder. Right. Yeah. Excellent. Really good to have this opportunity to visit with you and to share with our audience what you're up to here at uh, Earth Hero. You've got a lot of good things cooking. Yeah, well, I love sharing, so thanks for coming by. Pleasure. And uh, for those of you who are checking out the uh, video, uh, you can see that between Ryan and and me here are several of their uh, sustainability and health wellness products. And uh, we'll we'll give a little tour of that in a bit. But let me tell you first that uh, Ryan Lewis is a thought leader and innovator in the conscious commerce movement. As founder and CEO of the sustainable eco-commerce platform, Earth Hero, Ryan is committed to creating a more harmonious planet that works for all by adding awareness to our everyday purchasing decisions. Earth Hero is a curated online marketplace that uses its strict five-stage sourcing methodology to ensure only the most sustainable products are selected. This includes vetting the materials and ingredients of each product, how the labor component of each brand is treated, product and shipping packaging, all philanthropic activities, and of course, how each product helps people live a more sustainable lifestyle. Ryan combines his two decades of e-commerce experience with his passion for sustainability to deliver awareness, education, and conscious purchasing solutions to consumers that benefit the planet and society as a whole. So this uh, is right up our alley at the Why on Earth community. And I'm really excited that we'll be able to share a bit about the the affiliate relationship we've established with the Why on Earth community. And folks, you can get uh, special discounts using the code Why on Earth when you purchase products uh, at Earth Hero. Just to get uh, that right out of the way, we'll mention it more than once, but earthhero.com is where you go to find all of this amazing uh, stuff for your uh, day-to-day sustainability needs. So let me just uh, dive right in here, Ryan, and and ask you, um, you know, here we are in the uh, headquarters of the office and uh, things have been going gangbusters, I understand, since uh, COVID hit. So I want to ask a two part question. Number one is what prompted you to create Earth Hero? And number two is uh, now that it's uh, September 2020 at the time of this recording, uh, what are your thoughts about how uh, e-commerce and sales patterns have changed this year in particular, given the uh, context of a global pandemic. Yeah. Well, I started Earth Hero. I mean, the, the short answer is because I wanted a place like this, you know, for myself and my family to shop. And, you know, after doing some research about, um, you know, where to find sustainable products, uh, you know, holistically sustainable, not just solving, you know, one particular you know, part of the environment, you know, environmental sustainability. But like you said, you know, we're, we're looking at a wide variety, um, you know, big umbrella about in terms of what sustainability means. Um, and there was amazing products out there, but it was really confusing in terms of where to find them, who to trust, what really matters, um, you know, is it too expensive? All this stuff led to sort of I think indecision for a lot of people because it's just too much work in our culture these days everyone's living a very busy life and have gotten used to really convenient shopping so um, the concept of uh, sort of bringing all these products together under one platform uh, seemed like an interesting experiment and actually in terms of the business model itself um, was very similar to what I had done in my previous company so you know, in a lot of ways that gave me some visibility and confidence around uh, a lot of that aspect of the business um, and just, you know, put, the, put a lot of the effort into, um, is there enough products out there, you know, and this was back in 2015, you know, as I was like ideating on that concept, is there enough products out there to be a go-to, um, you know, platform? I didn't think that it was going to work if we had you know, a lot of what you're looking for or some of what you're looking for, right. but really, you know, where your go-to shop. And that's, and we can talk more about that, but that's sort of, um, you know, we're just getting started relative to what the vision is for Earth Hero. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, we're 
you know, in our fourth year now, and uh, you know, it's really just a matter of sourcing and uh, and bringing in uh, enough products for people to you know comfortably and conveniently shop for what they need and find it. Uh, you know, in terms of how e-commerce has changed, um, you know, that's a great question. I think there was a surge in e-commerce, you know, a decade or, ago, or more ago, um, and there's, it sort of had become normalized. It was growing, you know, a little bit, but the, the massive um, surge into e-commerce certainly has, uh, you know, slowed since its initial surge. And I mean, clearly once COVID hit and every, you know, a lot of retailers, uh, brick and mortar had to, you know, shut down, uh, people needed to buy stuff still, so uh, we certainly felt that. Um, you know, there's a big question as to once this passes, will people revert back to the way they, you know, normally pre-COVID were shopping, or is this sort of the new normal? You know, and I have mixed feelings about it because you know we're, um, you know, I, I would consider us a local business, even though we're e-commerce. You know, we're part of the Boulder community, and we certainly love to find local suppliers and you know really promote um and i personally you know promote that you know shop local support your local community uh e-commerce can be a, a little bit of a threat to that so i, I don't you know there's there mixed feelings about it you know we're an e-commerce model um it's really nice to be able to support people in in this time and you know reliably uh have the products they need and ship them same day you know, so they, you know, it's like a little piece of comfort and certainty in this crazy uncertain time. But on the other hand, um, you know, I want to see my brothers and sisters, uh, you know, that, that have local um, brick and mortar businesses thrive once again as well. So, uh, you know, we're always looking for ways to, you know, help support some of that movement as well. Yeah, it's so interesting thinking about the sustainability of local, regional, national, and even uh, uh, international or, or global uh, supply chains and footprints and business models and one of the things i'm really excited about that you guys are doing is uh, digging deep into the social and environmental impacts and of course uh, earth hero is be certified you guys are a part of the one percent for the planet uh, network and uh, these are some of the behaviors and you know credentials really um, that can be uh, shared with consumers to provide them with greater confidence that the impacts uh, that are, are resulting from shopping at Earth Hero are positive in a number of different ways, in a number of different uh, communities and sectors. And yeah, it's wild, right? Because virtually every local business these days has some sort of digital footprint. And many of the local retailers, brick and mortar retailers, are also uh, selling products online, right? I'm thinking of a friend's apothecary, um, Alpine Botanicals up in Netherlands, and I always love going in there, and I'm happy to know they're selling some of their products uh, to folks uh, online right now. So yeah, it's, it's my perspective is that, uh, you know, after having been in the local uh, movement for 10 or more years, uh, that there's a whole lot of good we can be doing with these sort of non-local or hybridized business models, but fundamentally paying attention to the impacts is so important. Yeah. Yeah, I love helping, uh, you know, anyone that, you know, tracks me down in terms of, you know, how can I get online? You know, how, how can I take my business and, you know, be accessible online? And it's so much easier than it used to be. Yeah. I mean, it really is possible to do a quick pivot, you know, with, you know, some of the platforms out there. And, and, uh, and, and I love to see that, that, that sort of, you know, uh, open-mindedness to be able to pivot, you know, in, in this environment. So I, I do see a lot of that, and I think it's great. Um, and just going back to, you know, B Corp and 1%, you know, when we, when I, when I started the business, um, it was, there was really three things that, three nonprofit partners that came to mind that would be sort of the backbone to, like you said, communicate to customers, this is the kind of business we are, but also, um, inspire us to do even more than we could come up with on our own and hold us accountable. I mean, there's just a reality that um, as you get going, you get busy and things start humming, like, uh, are we donating enough this year? Well, now we, contractually, you know, we have to give our money away as we grow. I mean, yeah. that's, that's the whole beauty of 1% is 
as we scale and grow, we do more good. It's baked into the model. It's baked into the growth. You know, B Corp, um, I think that's sort of become, becoming, maybe has already become sort of the stamp of approval for people that want to live these kind of, you know, this kind of lifestyle, yeah. you know, being, you know, a conscious consumer or, a, you know, someone that, you know, shops with the planet in mind, you know, cares about this. Uh, if they see that, that B Corp logo, uh, and if you don't know about it yet, you certainly will. They're, um, they're growing quickly. Uh, but that's sort of like, from an organizational standpoint, makes us do all the, you know, the right things. And again, like just taking the assessment in that, it's like, wow, I didn't even, like I thought about this, 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 and that, but this whole section, like I haven't even thought about yet, right. you know, um, a very comprehensive test. And then the third one is um, where uh, we've partnered with carbonfund.org and they allow us to be completely carbon neutral. So all of our inbound shipments from vendors and all of our outbound shipments to customers are completely offset. You know, through purchasing carbon credits and replanting, you know, trees, and um, you know they've got a lot of tactics to do that. But uh, we report on our operations. They tell us, you know, how that works. And uh, until drones are, you know, widely available, we still have to ship stuff in, you know, through um, through the mail and through UPS and all that. So I think between those three, um, and we, we we partner with many more, but that that's from like an operational standpoint. Those are kind of um, the trifecta. Of nonprofits that we partner with to, um, you know, be the best stewards we can. Yeah, that's that's really wonderful to hear. And, you know, I'm I'm a big fan of the uh, the B Corp certification, and I took a business through that process about ten years ago. I want to say, and and you're right, it is a robust uh, uh, and rigorous uh, model. And to come out the other side with ranking that allows one to claim the certification for the company uh, means something. It's it's substantial, and uh, they're not only looking at supply chain impacts and sourcing; they're also looking at governance and how employees and team members are uh, treated, and all you know, soup to nuts, really, the entire ecosystem that you're uh, creating and growing and stewarding, right, as an executive leader. And uh, yeah, it's cool to hear that you guys made that choice. Yeah, well, it was making the choice, and then, like you said, there was doing the work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because right. it took us. Uh, it personally took me. I don't even. If I had to count the hours, it would be a lot. You know. Yeah, thirty anyway is what I recall. Yeah, it was it was intense, and if you know when you're just starting out, it's hard to, you know, focus on so hard on something like that when you're like, wow, we really need customers because you know. <laughs> We gotta get going here. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, you know, and, and this, by the way, was a, uh, you know, sort of we're not venture backed or you know, it's this was a bootstrapped, you know, labor of love, and you know, so in the be in the very beginning, um, you know, that was just a full on thrash, you know, just right. to get the thing off the ground, and yeah, and I, you know, I was called an experiment. Like I don't know if this is gonna, I don't know where this is gonna go. You know, it's just an idea. You know. Well, I, I love in particular interviewing entrepreneurs and you know we we interview all kinds of different folks authors scientists youth activists all sorts of folks indigenous leaders and uh, entrepreneurs in particular have a a, a special I would say uh, skill set and perspective you might even say it's a bit of a disease in a way but uh, well, well, so you know so feel <laughs> yeah it's a bit masochistic sometimes but or sadistic I always get those two confused but uh, I'm curious uh, just getting a glimpse behind the scenes from the perspective of entrepreneurship, how long did it take from, you know, your first sale to being able to take a little bit of a breath? And, oh no, I'm and not there yet. you're not there yet. <laughs> yeah. I have, I have kid. I will say, you know, I, I'm, you know, we're, I'm a pretty transparent guy. You know, I always have been, um, you know, it took us, you know, we're just starting our fourth year. Um, you know, we're sort of just getting to the point where we're stabilizing. You know, and um, it's always been a fine line because we could have slowed the investments. You know, we've got 14 people on the team now. We started the year with eight. Um, you know, we're estimating we, we might hit 30 by the end of next year. So we're sort of at this inflection point. So the question becomes, you know, what's more important? You know, profitability or investing into the business? So we can continue to fuel growth and support and, and execute in a way that you know customers love. You know we want to be world class in everything we touch, and that 
that's there's a there's a give and take there you yeah, know so um, that being said you know we're not in a position to not quote unquote care about profits you know and just yeah just I, I mean I, you know won't quote any anyone uh, but there's certainly other entrepreneurs or businesses that um, you know have that that luxury mm. uh, so you know for me personally and, and I do have a business partner now that I've worked with at my last company that's come in um, and he's been fantastic you know he's, he's more of an op on the operation side and just really is helping us scale up and keep things together in that area but uh, it's it's a bit of a threading of the needle you know sure that yeah. um, at the moment is is going well but I mean it's just it's still, you know, we're. St I still think of us as a startup, right. and I still feel like, you know, we're we're going through the startup thrash. Yeah. But to your point, it's not quite as, or to your question, it's not. It's a different energy than it was like in year one, mm -hmm. you know, because, it's it's nice to have the validation, from customers that you know not only order once but they come back, yeah. and order again. Yeah. Like that's, a beautiful thing, and, uh, so yeah, the energy now is like, how do we. Where do we go for? How do we go from here? Where do we go from here? What do we want to do? What kind of products do we want to bring in? What do people need to hear from us? You know, it's 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 a uh, it's it's a little more fluid than it was, you know, in the beginning. Yeah, I imagine it is. So I'm uh, I'm I'm so curious. We've got a, a number of your products here to share with folks, and um, I'm wondering uh, what are the categories, broadly speaking, and how many SKUs do you guys have, roughly? I mean, you don't have to give a precise answer, but just ballpark. Yeah. Uh, and SKUs, for those of you who don't know, are the individual uh, discrete products, right? Um, yeah. Um, we launched in August of 2017 with just a couple hundred products. Mm -hmm. And most of those products at the time were in, we call it zero waste, um, sustainable essentials. Uh, there's you know some other terms out there but basically these are products that um, allow you to do the things you need to do in life without creating waste mm -hmm. or very minimal waste another way to think of it is you know anything you would use one time throw away mm -hmm. um, we sell the reusable alternatives mm -hmm. so you know straws water bottles food storage um, uh, plastic bags you know laundry detergent all that stuff the byproduct can be waste, mm -hmm. you know, even if you can recycle it, we don't, like, the, even better is, you know, it com it's compostable, or it's just very little ingredient, you know, material to the packaging, um, you know, really getting surgical with the footprint of what that product is, how it's designed, and its end of life. Yeah. So, we got our start there, but um, kind of quickly started expanding into, our, our second biggest category is personal care, mm -hmm. so really anything that you uh, would find in your bathroom, you know, sh uh, shampoo, conditioner, soaps, lotions, um, shaving creams and blades and, uh, yeah, all that stuff. Um, again, it's laden in plastic traditionally. Right. So it's created this awesome opportunity uh, for other entrepreneurs to create products uh, that sort of, you know, alleviate it. And uh, like the, the classic toothpaste tube. Mm -hmm. Right? It's like, what do you do about that? Well, we have a company that uh, called David's. Uh, it's not here, but it came. You know, they figured out it's a, it's a, it's an, a metal tube, same form factor, but at the end of life, you put it in your curbside recycling. Like, what a concept! Like, what well, makes sense, right? Yeah. Um, we also have, uh, you know, toothpaste that comes in these like glass jars. That you know, you don't. Again, it takes care of the tube. So when you're done, it's glass. You can recycle it. Uh, so. There's a lot of that stuff going on in personal care, just sort of re-engineering form factors and um, and, and, and packaging. Yeah. Right? So uh, in, in, in the book, Why on Earth, uh, that I wrote and published back in 2017, there's a chapter called Make that's focused on uh, manufactured uh, goods and many of the opportunities that are emerging and accelerating right now around um, alternative materials and so on. And one of the things I've always uh, been very excited about, at least going back many years now, is um, fungus and mycelial based packaging materials and even things like uh, leather alternatives that are coming out of that world. 
And I'm just curious, I got to ask if, are you seeing any of that yet that's fitting with your model? In like, what would be an example of that? So there, there are some uh, packaging materials that are made out of mycelia. Like, oh yeah, yes. Um, that are totally compostable yes, as a result. I, so, so for pack, I, I've seen that. I don't think that that technology or that that um, you know, I've seen a lot. There, you know, there's nuts, there's mushrooms, there's yeah. you know, all this like natural material. You know, banana leaves. Um, yeah. I feel like it hasn't really bubbled up to you know reach mass market yeah. production. Yeah. But that's coming. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. a lot of interest in that, and you know, it's a total game changer. I mean, if you can, yeah. if you can truly come up with a plastic alternative, right? That's a banana leaf, or you know, come up with your, yeah. your mushroom. Like, mm -hmm. uh, right? So I noticed like, it was like I think IKEA started experimenting with, like molding certain products into this mushroom bed. So. Yeah, you know, it protects the products for shipping, right? But then when you you know you receive it, it's zero waste yep. delivery. You just compost everything that you're, you know is in the furniture. So, very cool stuff. Um, I think there's a lot of movement, but you know, and if 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 anyone listening has you know can, says I'm wrong and there's just yeah, you call these guys like yeah. please let me know because yeah. I'm super interested in all that stuff. Yeah, I get, I get so excited thinking that the uh, day is uh, not too far off at this point where um, we can still enjoy a lot of the conveniences and, you know, sort of lifestyle enhancements of various products. And most of what we're buying and consuming ends up in our compost pile. And meanwhile, most people in the culture are composting, right? That that's another trend that... Uh, you know, a few generations back was common and uh, we sort of dropped the ball uh, here in the 20th, early 21st centuries. Yeah, the problem you with know. composting is most people, like the vast majority of people don't have access unless you, you know, you're, you're doing backyard composting. Right. But if you live on the 57th floor of an apartment complex, yeah. you know, there's ways to do it, but you can go back to the convenience factor, like, yeah. you know, uh, you know, I guess my perspective on all of this is we want to make that sustainable swap or that movement, you know, that journey to the next level, no work. Yeah. You know, in some cases, cool. it's actually, save, you know, making that swap saves you money and time. Right. You know, I mean, it becomes even, you know, you're, you're giving yourself a convenience, you know. Like, for, I just, you know, these guys, this is a relatively new brand, True Earth. These are dryer, these are, um, this is a laun laundry detergent. It just comes nice. with these sheets. Huh. You know, would you want to pick this up at the store or the big jugs of plastic? You know, and right. it's more, you know, it's more expensive. It takes up more room. It's heavier. It creates waste. You know, this just comes in a little tiny cardboard sleeve that you can recycle. It's amazing. And it, you know, and it works. And there's, you know, so there's, a, there's a lot of stuff like that, that, you know, people think, oh, it's more expensive and more, and, and more inconvenient. Right. It's not. That used to maybe be truer, but there's competition now and, and innovation that's trying to like figure out how to really reach the mass market. And I think they're coming up yeah. with some cool stuff. That's really exciting. Well, hey, would you show us a few of the products you got here? Yeah, absolutely. It'd be really yeah, fun to check my, this out. And this is, again, such a small assortment, but, um, and just to kind of briefly move through categories, you know, yeah. pet, pet supplies, oh, great. Um, children's toys, baby, uh, clothes and su and supplies. We have you know from diapers, uh, new mom uh, stuff. You know for after um, the baby's born, uh, we've got um, you know apparel, uh, even some fashion, jewelry. Uh, a lot of a lot of home accessories. You know, stuff for your kitchen. Um, we talked about personal care and, and zero waste. So the idea, again, being that we've got about 7,000, 7,500 um, individual SKUs right now. Okay, great, yeah. Uh, but from a, in terms of where we're going, you know, that's just a fraction of, of where, it, where we're going. And it's not mm -hmm. that we want to bring in stuff just because, but yeah. we are, you know, this is a perfect example. Um, this is a, you know, maybe you remember this, a bath mat for uh -huh. uh, your baby to put in the bathtub so yeah. the baby doesn't slide around. Um, my kids are in high school now, so I, but I do remember having one of these, yeah. you know, and the traditional ones are like loaded with 
just crap, yep. you know, yep. um, chemicals and toxins and all that. It's just natural rubber mat. Um, nice. You know, it's not a very sexy product, but so we're trying to find those, those everyday sort of practical needs as well. Mm. Um, this is, it's funny because I'm a child of the 80s and yep. I fanny never packs. thought fanny packs would come back. Right. They're back. <laughs> I'm not ready to wear one yet, but <laughs> apparently everyone else is. Uh, this is one of our more trending products. Uh, Photo Epoxy, maybe you've recognized the brand. Yeah. Um, great outdoor brand. These are just remnants, um, you know, reused material. They just mm. sew them together. Uh, so it's, you know, create, it actually diverts waste. Right. Uh, that's cool. Huh. You know, we didn't talk about cosmetics, but that's another area that, um, you know, we're getting more into. This is a brand is Elite, uh, and they, all their packaging comes in glass and bamboo. Uh, where again, this industry is sort of plastic laden, um, and their ingredients and their products is great as well. Um, kind of sticking to the personal care theme, shampoo and conditioner is one of those uh, products that typically comes in a big plastic jug, and you know that how that goes. Um, Plain Products came up with a concept. This is um, a fully recyclable ca uh, can, hmm. and uh, it comes with you can order a pump the first time and then yeah. um, we send you a return label when you're done with it they you ship it back to them prepaid they refill it nice right? and you know clean it refill it so it's not even like you know you can recycle it but they they'll actually Just pay for you it. to reuse yeah. it that's great uh, so very wow very cool thing what is that brand uh plain products p-l-a p-l-a-i-n okay okay cool products um Food huggers are an interesting one. They, uh, so maybe, maybe other, maybe you've uh, experienced the pain of a half-eaten avocado. <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> so these will just go, go on your avocado um, yeah. and keep it green for you know an extra one to three days, depending on where you live. Yeah. Uh, and maybe longer. So and they also make lots of circular ones for you know cucumbers and and it'll keep <laughs> your you know, half-eaten fruits and vegetables fresh longer. Yeah, oh, that's um, great. Pet supplies. Cut down on food waste. Exactly. F food waste, by the way, just quick uh, side stat for folks. If food waste were a country, in terms of greenhouse gas footprint, it would be the third uh, most emitting country. So food waste accounts for uh, more greenhouse gas emissions uh, than any other country out there other than the United States and China. Right, so it's it's significant. Yeah, and especially in this country, in right? Canada, right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's so we're a big proponent of that, and you know these are one solution: the avocado, uh, the avocado huggers, the food huggers. Mm. But we also sell um, veggie bag. I don't have that here, but it's a it, it's a it's a bag that you can put your veggies in, and it's just the the, the properties of the bag help keep the produce fresher longer. Nice. So yeah. Kind of a cool concept. It's great. Um, mm -hmm. This is a dog leash made from an old climbing rope. Right. Pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Bamboo toothbrushes. I mean, yeah. this is good. Like we saw, you know, this is just why use a plastic toothbrush when right. a bamboo toothbrush will do just as much good and doesn't cost anymore. You know, uh -huh. just a you know excellent easy swap. Um, we sell dishwasher and laundry pods. You know these little pods. Mm -hmm. You know the big brands make this, but the ingredients um, and the packaging. As you can tell, just a cardboard box, yeah, and awesome. the ingredients are nice and clean, Straight and it does forward. a great job. Hand sanitizer. Uh huh. Popular item right now, huh? We, we actually we did we did sell one skew of hand sanitizer uh, that I barely knew about um, until COVID hit, and we obviously sold out in about you know 15 seconds, yeah. whatever it was. Uh, but it's cool because um, this is an example. So Soul Organics uh, made this. Before COVID, they were we, the only thing that we bought from them were, were uh, bed sheets and towels. Mm. And they said, "Hey, if we make hand sanitizer in glass and like a really high quality product, would you guys buy it?" And I said, "That sounds great. Mm. We'll take it." So they manufactured yeah. this, um, just very you know innovative. Yeah. Uh, and it's you're gonna have to try this. It's the best hand sanitizer on the market. I'm telling you, it's, okay. it's almost fun to put on. Cool. Shampoo bars, conditioner bars. Um, this stuff's amazing. I personally used this guy, and let's uh, take it out here. But um, it's you know it's just a piece of cardboard in terms of the the product and or the product packaging. And the bar itself lasted me 
six months. Now I have short hair. I'm just glad I still have hair. <laughs> but yeah, I haven't had a haircut since February, so it grows. Yeah, you're looking. It's looking good. <laughs> it's like that. I had long hair back in my twenties, man, and I tell you what, it's kind of fun not cutting it for a little while. Yeah. So. I mean, these guys think about everything, right? A little, again, a little piece of paper yeah. um, versus plastic. And there you go, just a little. So what do you, do you rub it on your head or on your hand and you then? Can, you can do it in your yeah. hand. I mean, for me, I would just do this. Yeah. I mean, just Boom. a couple, couple uh, swipes and, and you're good. And it's, it suds up just like everyday shampoo. It's That's just great. a great product. Um, as far as face masks. Yeah, obviously a hot topic right now. Lots of them. Uh, uh -huh. This is code epoxy, you know, accordion style. You know, made um, made made with um, upcycled uh, material hmm. and with a good message that says "do good." Yeah, I like that. Um, we got this these organic cotton ones. You know, um, more of the ear loop style, the seam in the middle, kind of keep it off your face. We've got uh, more organic cotton. These guys are super accessible. Like we sell these for four ninety five. Nice. Um, yeah. And they're they're a high quality mask. That's great. Got a little insert if you want to put a filter in there. Got little kids masks. Mm. Um, pink and blue, you know, so they nice. can have yeah. some fun and some other colors. This is a hemp mask, um, huh. again, with a place to put, you know, a filter if you want, and it's got the more tie around style. Wow, yeah. Uh, kind of your everyday black mask. Um, and, you know, we also have the gators that you can pull up uh -huh. uh, from Function that yeah. are made from recycled water bottles. So, you know, we try to just, you know, we got big gallon hand sanitizers too. We're just trying to, again, just cool. provide, provide access for people um, that need this stuff without sacrificing, you know, clean ingredients and materials. Right. Just going to remind our audience too that uh, you can go to earthhero.com and uh, try out these products and use the code WHYONEARTH uh, to get a discount on that, 10% discount on that order. And uh, yeah, you've got so many fun products here. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm imagining what your home must look like. It would be a uh, fun to tour through your kitchen and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, well, you know, these are, I'm wearing uh, Saula shoes. We sell uh -huh. these as well. Um, and just, I don't know if this is in the frame, but like this, these, these are, these Might are have made, to lift it up higher. <laughs> yeah, these are made out of recycled water bottles um, on the outer. You got organic huh. cotton shoelaces. It's got a cork yeah. uh, insole. And then the highest percentage of recycled um, foam that they can manage and still have a good quality cool. shoe. So it's a good looking shoe too. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I love their style and um, kicks, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you know, I could spend all day, but you know, music's another thing to talk about. But um, House oh, of Marley, yeah. you know, they use a lot of recycled um, electronics and huh. bamboo, and uh, cool. you know, it's just again for a product like that, it's. So those are headphones we're looking at right there. Yeah. May not be all that visible, but I'll I'll try to show it to the camera. Um, <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, and there's, you know, we get earbuds, they make, uh, I think we brought any here, but we also have uh, compostable phone cases. Huh. I don't have my phone on me, but it's uh, from Pila Case. Uh, and even we're selling like iPhone cords and stuff made from recycled materials. Kind of everything. Like, you know, just really cool. That's from Nimble. So you um, have like a whole electronics category, really. We're building it out, you know, yeah. so it's, uh, you know, a lot of laptop cases and. No you kidding. Know, it's it's a hard category because there's a lot of you know bad stuff yeah typically yeah. isn't in that product but we are you know we're starting to see more come online hmm. and take advantage of that for sure um, yeah I mean this is kind of a specialty kind of thing but you know in terms of making your own cleaners yeah this is pretty cool so it's got um, tile wood bathroom glass kitchen cleaner and then you fill up each of the ingredients to where huh. it tells you to. So it takes the guesswork out of measuring and you just basically follow the directions. All the recipes you, are right there. You get like four or five of these bottles oh, cool. and then you can make your own cleaners for life. That yeah. is really cool. Oh my gosh. So a lot of innovation, yeah. stasher bag. Um, these guys really crushed it. They make all sorts of sizes and colors for food storage. It's a, huh. it's a um, Ziploc kind of experience without using, the, you know, the brand that's kind of what it is yeah um the difference is you can boil bake dishwash microwave freeze it's like utilitarian you can oh my gosh this thing would you know it's it's 100 percent you know food grade silicone it'll last forever and it just takes a lot of that unnecessary leftover packaging you know 
or if you want to marinate chicken before you barbecue it, yeah, it sort of removes that like one time use it block. Yeah, um, that's excellent. Yeah. I'm even thinking for some of the uh, hikers and backpackers out there, that would be a pretty cool yeah. way to carry some food. Huh. So I mean, yeah, we're always looking for like life. That's exactly. I'm glad you said that. Like, like, like real lifestyle solutions. Yeah. Like I'm going camping. If I, what, what waste would be naturally created? How can we go find products that solve that? Right. So it's kind Stasher, of Stasher, huh? That's a really cool one. Yeah, and uh, you know, diapering, diapers yeah. kill the earth. I mean. Right. So. We do sell one-time use diapers that are compostable. Uh -huh. It gets a little tricky with you know human waste and all that, but um, but even the inputs to those diapers are dramatically healthier than your, your typical big brand diaper. Mm -hmm. And then those for the then the, then there's the Brave. Um, these have gotten the the whole concept of reusable diapers has you know has gotten I think it's come pretty far along. Absolutely. But you know we they, they we sell you know these the inners and then. So they make these really cute, like, you know, stylized outers. Yep. You know, so Those I have some fun with it. Yeah. My um, kids had uh, that kind of thing back in the day when they were little. So much fun. Yeah. No, it's, <laughs> it's, you know, you got you, you to gotta start having fun with that when they're young. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And this is our number one seller. I'm so excited about this. The bamboo utensil set. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, I think it's a trigger for people because you get those, you know, you, people are eating out and you get the, one time use plastic all the time, mm -hmm. right? And it's just great to trash. So yeah. keep this in your car, at your office, um, you know, in, in a purse. And it's got, you know, fork knife spoon and some chopsticks. I love to put chopsticks in there. Like uh -huh. this is part of, you know, love the it. everyday. Uh, you know, this is uh, gonna really excite one of our board members, Art of Nikolkov, who has Earth Coast Productions. Cause he's been talking about uh, having Why on Earth help to uh, popularize these and get the word out. So you guys are already doing it. I'll just tell them about you guys and what you're doing here. Be great. And, you know, we help people co-brand all the time as well. It's cool. Not, yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh, that'd be fun. We could do a little, like, promotional thing here. Like on Earth and just, that'd be interesting. Yeah. And yeah. super affordable, so. Huh. Um, oh, by the way, tell us about this, because I, I, when I first walked in the office, yeah. this caught my eye. I was like, oh, we got we to gotta film right here. Yeah, it's funny. Um, that, that line got spewed out. We did this like animation. We we're trying to come up with like a really fun way to describe what Earth Hero is yeah. for like Facebook and Instagram. And it needed like a like a closing line, you know? And we were just coming up, it was just like terrible ideas one after the other, right? <laughs> and it was just blurted out. Like, just shop like you give a shit, yeah. you know? <laughs> I love it. And it stuck. So uh, So is that your official tagline? It's uh you know, it's funny, um th this on the back of this shirt it's sustainability made simple. Yeah. Um, we, we like to play with choices, make changes, um, but shop like you give a shit is sort of trending. You know, we have to I see. Like if, it. We're, we're, we're seeing, you know, how much it catches on. You know, we we have a more conservative, you know, older crowd that as well that yeah. don't want to offend by any things. Yeah. yeah. I, you know. You I know, think it's, it's, I think it's. I think it's going to be okay. It's hilarious. It reminds me of. Uh, we might play with this actually when we announce this podcast episode. We might. Uh, weave that into some of the uh, materials, but when I was uh, writing Why on Earth, there was a chapter, there is a chapter on um, waste, human waste, the notion of waste, composting all this, and initially I was calling that chapter shit, and one of my dear friends and mentors who's older came along and saw that and he said, I don't like it, and I thought to myself, yeah, there's probably a lot of folks who wouldn't respond so favorably to that, so I ended up changing it. But what's kind of fun these days with digital marketing, at least, is we can sort of segment, right? And uh, speak in different uh, vernacular yeah. to different audiences. But I particularly do like that expression. I think it's great. Yeah, well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> you know, so far, so good. Um, we've had a couple of customers, you know, give us some other feedback. But, you know, yeah. and you know this, if you try to, you know, be everything to everyone, it, it, it can be, that doesn't work out so well either. So, yeah. Um, I think this movement needs a little bit of fun. Sure, you know, agreed. Mm -hmm. I think you know there's been a lot of doom and gloom yeah. kind of promotion yeah. historically. Yeah. So I mean that's another thing that we try to do is provide uh, light, you know, fun, inclusion, optimism. Cool. You know, kind of create a positive energy around what's really a really challenging situation. 
I like it. That's really important. Um, let me just uh, take a minute to give a set of shout outs to some of our sponsors and supporters. And I want to remind our audience, this is the Why on Earth Community podcast. I'm Aaron Perry, your host. And today we're visiting with Ryan Lewis, the founder and CEO of Earth Hero. And you can go to earthhero.com uh, to get these products and become one of the uh, returning customers to Earth Hero and help these guys with their great mission and get products for your lifestyle uh, as well. You can find Earth Hero on Facebook as well at uh, Shop Earth Hero. And Shop Earth Hero is also their Instagram. Um, we'll put that in the uh, show notes as well, but just so you guys can uh, plug in with some social media. And our sponsors who are making this podcast series possible in this episode possible include Earth Coast Productions, The Lidge Family Foundation, Alpine Botanicals, Purium, Earth Hero, Vera Herbals, Growing Spaces, Soil Works, Earth Water Press, 1% for the Planet, Dr. Bronner's, and Waylay Waters. And of course, a big shout out to all of y'all who have joined our monthly giving program. And uh, you can join the monthly giving program at any level at whyonearth.org. And at certain levels, you'll get shipments uh, sent to you of the Waylay Waters uh, CBD hemp infused aromatherapy soaking salts for your own uh, self care as a thank you. Um, so a huge thanks and shout out to all of the organizations and people making this possible. And you know, a big part of the fun we get to have with Why on Earth, Ryan, is uh, connecting with organizations like you guys with all the good you're doing, helping to amplify that a bit out there. And uh, it's, it's a great joy to, to just see uh, all that you got going on here. And I, I love that the clothing and hats up here are uh, hopefully in frame as well. Um, and, and the notion of having some fun too, right? It's like we can create a, a joy-filled, sustainable, regenerative, stewardship-oriented culture and help heal uh, so many of the challenges that we're facing. It's not to say it's not hard work and it's not to say it's not going to take some time, but it seems also that striking those tones of hope and optimism actually help lead us in the direction we want to go. And uh, that for me as a, as a parent, as a, as a uh, writer and as a uh, activist with the Why on Earth community, that seems to be one of the most important things we can choose as leaders in our varying uh, capacities. Yeah, well, you know, first of all, thank you for, you know, everything you're doing. Uh, yeah, of course. It's, you know, it's, it's people like yourselves, you know, doing the work, that, getting these messages out that, um, you know, it's not only appreciated, but it's really needed to break through the noise. Um, yeah. That, you know, and, and get people access to, you know, all these brands and, and concepts that you're talking about. So thank you. And, uh, yeah, I think... You know, one of the, I think one of the challenges with the movement, you know, historically for me is that, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of anger. Right. And for the right reasons. It's mm -hmm. so well intended. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to lead that. It's hard to bring people into the movement that, you know, I think initially when, you know, a lot of these problems are being discovered, you know, I think there was sort of that, you know, we've got to get this urgent message out, you know, at all costs. Mm. But I think at this point, you know, we're in 2020, people know yeah. there's problems. I don't think that that's, a, that, that's not the issue anymore. Mm. Um, and people are concerned, you know. Politics aside, I think most people at this point understand that we need to make some changes. Yeah. So the question, you know, I start asking myself is like, what's the, like, what do people need to hear? And how mm. do we, they need to hear it at this point? Mm. And um, yeah, I think I think that is one of the things that the movement needs is just because it's serious work doesn't need to mean doesn't mean that we need to be very you know straight and serious and right. angry. Like <laughs> we can laugh and smile while we solve the problems too. Yeah, so, absolutely. You know, and that's that's our goal is to help others do that as well. Yeah, that's so important. I often tell folks, uh, you know, we're collaborating and interns and so on, partners. Hey, if, if we're not having fun, it's quite possible we're not doing it right. And, uh, you know, well that said. the joy thing, I, the more uh, I've been at this kind of work, the, the more deeply I believe that focusing on joy, 
on love and those kinds of energies and emotions is actually really important. And, you know, in the business world, uh, that's been sort of anathema, uh, with some exceptions here and there, like Yvonne Chouinard from Patagonia, for example, a great leader. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, by and large, that's kind of, oh, a weakness or, uh, you know, a, a pathology even it might be regarded. But as our culture is evolving and as our economy is evolving, and as we as consumers are becoming much more informed about our impacts in our whole world, in our communities, in our own families, in our own lives and bodies, it actually seems that those uh, fundamentals of joy and love and service and stewardship are essential. Yeah. And I love that you've created a business uh, with that kind of foundation. And I can just feel it when I walked in here and just being with these products, it just feels really good. And it, and it makes me want to shop here, right? Well, I, I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, it's, you know, it, it's, it's work in itself mm. to stay on that track yeah. because you're, we're operating in a world that's not necessarily collectively in that track. Right. So I feel like the moment we let our guard down or, you know, you're not being, we're not being conscientious of, of all that, you can start to get, you know, naturally pulled into the you know sort of the, the main swath mm -hmm. and uh you know especially this year yeah. you know there's so much fear and anger and again i think a lot of it is really well intended and founded but like trying to understand our role within that and how to not counterbalance but like just you know we don't need to you know, jump into, you know, the, the chaos necessarily, but at the same time, how do we help people, including ourselves, through it? Yeah. With, you know, without that, that, that loud noise mm. that seems to be coming from everywhere, mm. Mm. even though we support so much of it. So it's, it's a, you know, it's a real, it's a real interesting challenge um, when it comes to tone and authenticity and, and, and really, you know, making sure that the way we're speaking to um, our community is is well received and helpful. That's really great. So I want to ask, you know, one father to another, how has fatherhood, parenthood, how has having children, your boys are high school age, um, how has that influenced your your work here at the company? I mean, from a classic perspective of like, I want to leave the world in a better place than it is right now, certainly um, than it has been in the past. Uh, it's motivated because I know that, you know, I hope that they one day will have kids and, you know, the, it, it just, it, it's so, um, I guess it's, it's cliche, but for a reason, like there's, there's logic to it. Um, so I think, you know, it would be remiss to not mention that, but I also think especially with my kids now um, in high school, like they're starting to think about how they're going to participate in the world. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm proud, I guess, in a way, to, for them to be able to witness what I'm attempting to do. Yes. I'm very transparent with them uh, in the sense of starting anything is hard. Yes. This was certainly no exception. Um, and that from, you know, a father-son or family dynamic, like there's times where uh, I've got a lot on my mind, you know, sure. <laughs> or I'm at a baseball game and there's like 30 minutes of downtime in between games. And I'm on my computer, you know, and like yeah. they're seeing that side of it too. Like, yeah. um, but I think especially now that they're getting older, like they're starting to ask really interesting questions. And, mm. um, and that was really my, one of my goals, uh, in starting Earth Hero was cause I came from a more traditional business. Um, it was restaurant supplies. Yeah. Great team, you know, it's a great business, but I wanted to your, you know, to your point, like I wanted, uh, you know, a more congruent um, experience for myself so uh, my, you know, my family could see that, you know, I think it makes me a better father husband um, because I'm passionately involved in what I'm doing. I wanted to make sure that if I'm going to spend so much time away from my kids, you know, at work that 
it was worth it, you know, and that I really um, was passionate about it and aligned with it. So, yeah. in a lot of ways, the kids are like an accountability thing. I think, like, if yeah. if it was just myself, I'd probably still, you know, I, you know, I don't know, it'd just be a totally different experience. <laughs> but they were definitely a part of, yeah. you know, the vision. That's really beautiful. I love the uh, underlying what you're expressing. I'm I'm hearing integrity, and. I think there's a real gift in modeling for our kids, the young adults that they are, uh, taking some of the risks. Yeah. yeah, we don't know. We don't know how it's all going to turn out, right? I don't and, know that because yeah, it's, you know, it's pretty messy. <laughs> it's, it can be really messy, but it also shows them that we have grit. Uh, we have a lot of skills. We have resources to draw on, and. Uh, I do believe as a parent, that's one of the biggest gifts we can give to our kids actually is demonstrating that mm -hmm. and to lean into the adventure of it all, right? Because sometimes uh, maybe leaning in the other direction of safety and security might be compelling, but heck, at the end of the day, how much is of, their, of, of that is there really anyway, right? In, it, well in all of this, so well um, yeah, to be able to uh, just lean into the adventure of it all and, and pull on those uh, resources we have inside. And for me, it makes me think of my, my grandparents and, and, you know, ancestors and elders. And in a way, there's this lineage of passing that kind of information on through the generations. Yeah, I think it, you're exactly right. I mean, I, I hear my parents talk about their parents and now... I'm talking about that to my, you know, it's like four or five, six generations of storytelling. And, I, you know, at the, at the end of the day, it really does feel almost like a sense of responsibility, yeah. you know, like if I opt out of all in, then that's what I'm teaching them, you know, or something like that. I gotta write that down. Is that your own? If I opt out of all in? I, yeah, I, I wish I could say that I planned that or thought or said it before. It kind of, but I mean, I think that's it's true. And you, you know, you said it. You, it's not just something you're telling them. Like it's an experience they're they're watching. Yeah. You know, I. Yeah. So I and that experience I think can be challenging. Maybe if they're young, like really young, because mm. it's just you know they don't really understand. But I think you know, I mean, it's great. Like. My kid's taking, or, you know, I guess it was last year, he was taking a business marketing class. And, like, I was just, what'd you learn? What are they teaching you? Yeah. I wish I had a class like that. I could have yeah. benefited. I got a music degree. I didn't learn that stuff. <laughs> you know? But, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it is cool. I think, I'm hoping, I mean, the goal in all of this is to enjoy myself along the way. But at the end of the line, I'm hoping that that, that attitude is also means no regrets. It's like... Mm. Screwed up a lot along the way, but you know, it wasn't for lack of, of effort. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's absolutely beautiful. And uh, I, what did, did we decide on a warehouse tour or? Um, yeah, I'm happy to jump back there. I mean, products, I live in products. Yeah, it'd be fun just to give a little behind the scenes. What I'll do is I'll uh, get behind the camera and operate from there. And you can just kind of give us a tour. It's yeah. cool to uh, walk through back there. And uh, before we, jump uh, over there. I want to make sure that uh, we've hit on everything that we want to hit on. And I guess I'm noti noticing in my notes here that conscious consumerism is one of the points that we wanted to discuss. And I, I know we've been talking about that sort of implicitly all along, but could you just encapsulate what that means and why that's important at Earth Hero? Yeah, that's one of my favorite perspectives on all this because it goes beyond sustainability in my mind. Um, you know, I don't know what the official definition of conscious consumerism is, but the way I perceive it is before you make any purchase, before you swipe your credit card, insert your credit card, you're just, you're thinking about how is this going to impact the planet? How's it going to impact the health of the planet? You know, the health of my family, you're conscious of what's happening. Um, I always tell people, you know, if you just ask that one question, like how is this purchase going to impact the planet? Um, you're, all sorts of things will start to change for you because you can't 
unlearn that? And even if you don't know the answer, I don't know. Well, then the next step is to get curious, right? Start thinking about it. It doesn't mean, you know, you white knuckle, um, you know, late night, all nighter to try to like bring yourself up to speed, but just start getting curious, um, you know, asking questions as you shop when you're on, you know, whether it's brick and mortar online, live chat, you know, Google some stuff, you know, you read a blog, why is plastic bad? You know, it's amazing. People know plastic is bad, but a lot of people don't know why, mm -hmm. right? And once you just start to, you know, put these reference points in, in your brain, they start to connect really quickly. And I think that once you become, once that becomes normalized, like, you don't, mm -hmm. there's no effort, it just becomes part of the way you operate, um, you start to become conscious about every, like, a lot of things in life. You know, you start, that, that will, you'll start to live a more conscientious life, yeah. you know, that goes beyond sustainability. Um, that's been, uh, you know, my experience. It's been a, the experience of a lot of, uh, that people have told me uh, that, they, they, that they've experienced. And, you know, at the, at the end of the day, it may, I think it just makes, it makes one a more present, grounded, and thoughtful person because mm -hmm. just of that one question, you know? Mm -hmm. and it, so, yeah, I think it's important. Um, it's a good place to start. Because I think, you know, there'll, there'll be natural next steps and questions that arise, you know, from that journey. And it is a journey. And everyone's at a, you know, some people do amazing, you know, there's people that put all their trash for a whole year in a glass, little tiny mason jar, right? Um, there's other people that, you know, there's a million different ways to help. Um, and I think comparing ourselves to superheroes, um, doesn't really matter it's, it's irrelevant it's like what matters is just take the next step in your personal life if you're just recycling maybe look into compost if you're still using you know one-time use plastic bags maybe start with buying an alternative for that in fact one of the best places to start is looking at anything you use one time throw away yeah and start thinking about sourcing an alternative and once you get through that process because there's a lot if you haven't been doing much, you'll naturally be ready for things like um, reusable, you know, refillable shampoos and and climbing rope dog leashes. Right. And, and you know, and, and here's the cool thing: is it's just more fun. I mean, there's just these products have a great story. Um, you know, when you're having, you know, when you're having beers the next, you know, barbecue, or you're, you know, on a hike or a park, and you pull out your stuff, like. People are always asking me about like, well, what is that? You yeah, know, what, what are you yeah. doing? Like, you know, it's just, it's kind of fun. You know, it's a little bit of social, uh, you know, social points. You know, social cred. Cool, I love it. Social cred. So yeah, the idea is like, uh, you can boost your uh, show and tell game too, right? And uh, I've heard silent activism. I like it. You yeah, know, like huh. you just, you know, you start using these products, and people, you'll naturally spread the word without even saying anything. That's a lot of fun. I can tell you're a marketer because you have some really great uh, one-liners. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of not great ones. <laughs> oh, man. Um, this is really great. Well, what is the uh, the big... Uh, I love that term, BHAG, right? Big, hairy, audacious goal. What is the big vision for Earth Hero? We want to essentially curate products for every corner of your life. Mm -hmm. So you can depend on us when you need or want to make a purchase um, that we take to get, you know, you, you don't have to worry about figuring out how to make a good choice because we've done that work for you. So in order to achieve that, I don't know how many more products we need, but we're going to be busy for a while, you know. It's it's really that simple. We want we want. I mean, you know, our mission is to make sustainable so shopping. I'm just pointing to our yeah. Um, uh, to make sustainable shopping so easy, everyone does it. So yeah. if everyone on the planet is thinking and shopping this way, we've achieved our mission. Um, that's probably not going to happen in my lifetime, but I'm going to continue to try. So we can, and, you know, and who knows? Maybe it will. I hope so. You know, I mean, um, I think 
there's incredible energy behind the movement right now. Yeah. I mean, really. And I have to separate the fact that, you know, certain communities, like we're in Boulder, this is a very sustainably minded community. Other communities aren't maybe as much, but I also have seen, I'm seeing a lot of changes too. Yeah. Just in the three, four years I've been doing this. Mm. So, uh, I believe the human race is capable of amazing things when, you know, a real threat is, you know, is there. I'm hoping that, you know, all the things happening in the world don't get even more intense. I mean, these, these you know, these natural disasters and these, just the, the, the stuff happening in the world is, that we're sort of becoming normal is kind of scary, you know, and I think there is a lot of people waking up uh, to this every day. Yeah. So I hope you're right. I really do. Yeah. May it be so. That would be, that'd be a nice way to check out. Right. right at the end. It's Absolutely. Like, Mission accomplished. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, we're um, you know, I, while you know we are super stoked to have as much on available today. Yeah. Uh, and we we really, I mean, we're, we've got some nice momentum. We upload and add, you know, three to five brands a week. You know, when, when we're really in stride. Uh, so there's always new stuff coming up. You know, it's not like we're this is some far off thing. It's happening in real time. Mm. And uh, but you know, from that perspective, we're just getting started. Yeah. So much. So much more to go. Yeah, it's fun. It's, it's a really great exciting. challenge. Excellent. Well, I, I love that uh, that we can watch uh, Earth Hero grow and participate, and know that whenever we're spending money with you guys, it's uh, going to support great uh, companies and suppliers that you've vetted, and these other uh, aspects of your uh, foundation of sustainability. So I just I absolutely love it, and want to encourage you all to check out Earth Hero. Um, earthhero.com and uh, should we tour the warehouse? Let's do Does that it. sound good? Cool. So let me uh, grab the camera and uh, we'll uh, walk around. Off we go. Off we go. Voila. So yeah. um, this is our warehouse. We don't stock everything in this facility. We do leverage our brand partners to um, also help with some of the assortment. So there's, um, yeah, there's, a, you know, our, kind of our best sellers. And, you know, it's a good representation what we have, but at the same time, it's definitely not everything. So we can kind of zigzag through, actually starting here, we were talking about House of Marley. Um, you know, audio, we've got a lot of headphones, ear, earbuds, um, AirPod Pro, and AirPod cases that are compostable. And you know, these were the, uh, Compostable phone cases I was talking tell about, telling you about um, by Pila case. Cool. Uh, you even have a turntable up there. That's great. <laughs> yeah, bamboo That's turntable. Fun. Old school. Um, you know, I was mentioning kitchen supplies, a lot of bamboo, you know, cutting boards and, um, you know, utensils and that type of thing. Yeah. I mean, one of my favorite stories, chop value, these guys make uh, cutting boards and iPhone stands and posters and all sorts of cool stuff out oh, of recycled beautiful. chopsticks and it just has no a way. nice beautiful look wow that's really something um, and it's a great story how do you how do you how can people look to earth hero as a guide or resource as the industries continue to evolve new products come online new sectors is there i imagine there's a significant education component yeah we um we have a lot of blogs you know yeah a lot of articles a lot of content, uh, you know, like you said, there's a whole section of that. And we try to do it, you know, via social and email. And just if you're once you're part of our ecosystem, you know, we're, we're, we're constantly putting new information out there. So, yeah, that's a big, you know, as you, as you mentioned, that's a big goal of ours. Yeah, that's it's, really cool. Um, so, yeah, we got uh, glass, these are, you know, glass straws. Um, this is some of that technology we're talking about, uh, chargers. Yeah. Um, Phone cables, uh, all sorts of electronic stuff made from recycled content. I apologize for our viewers that the light back in here is a little dark, a little mixed, but um, it's water cool bottles, to see all this. You know, I think you're all familiar with Hydro Flask, yeah. Clean Canteen, lots of food storage, um, everyday produce bags, shopping bags, more bamboo utensils. Uh -huh. 
um, you know, bees wrap. This stuff's great. It's yep. different bees. I have uh, I have some of that. Yeah. Some wrap sandwiches, Those are fun. And leftovers. Lots of um, these are stainless steel food storage with silicone lids. <laughs> um, compartmentalized in some pieces. It's our packing station that is our packing area that it is after hours, so it's nice and tiny. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I was talking about uh, David's earlier. This is the toothpaste that comes in the. Uh, There we go. Like a, like a yep. metal tube, you know, so. Yep, very, uh, cool. Very cool there. Huh. Uh, Stasher, lots of colors. We were talking about these guys um, behind me. This is sunscreens, personal care. Uh, we got tons of Elite, the bamboo, uh, cosmetics. Earth Harbor is great. Um, a lot of glass packaging for um, skincare and that type of thing. Mm. Here's more. This is actually kind of a cool concept from Seed. This was a spinoff from L'Oreal. Hmm. Um, and an, emplo an employee at L'Oreal said, I want to go do my own thing. And they're like, actually, you should do it under L'Oreal. Hmm. And it's compostable um, packaging. Oh, that's cool. For things like shampoos and lotions and that type of thing. Wow. Uh, you know, something as simple as floss that comes in a zero waste recyclable package. So it takes the plastic away. Yeah. Um, very common. More personal care, uh, more food wraps, even coffee filters, you know, just totally reusable. You don't have to use them once and throw them away. Yep. Over here we have uh, more kitchen supplies. This is one of our most popular items uh, where it's a dish brush and then instead of throwing it away and getting a new one, you just have to take this one piece off and you can buy the replacements. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so great. So really this is cool. this is like Christmas for the uh, sustainability folks, right? It is going through here. This is a lot and of we're fun. We're actually already getting ready for that. Oh yeah. That's, when I walked in before you got here, I asked, "Are you guys uh, getting excited for the holidays yet?" And, and one of your team said, "I don't even want to think about it yet. Yeah. <laughs> we're not there quite yet." Yeah. It's, <laughs> we'll, we'll get there, but he's right or she's right. Um, <laughs> we're even starting to sell some more um, books. Uh huh. Uh, you know, it's easy being green. Story stuff actually. Yep. An inspiration for me. Um, yep. To yep. Start this. So. Yeah, I talk about the story of stuff and why on earth actually. Really, that's yeah. interesting. Um, yeah. That book was a huge factor um, in how Annie Leonard articulates, you know, exactly what happens when we consume. Yeah. Uh, as you know, so. Yeah. Very very great read cool. for anyone that wants um, a deeper dive. Yep. Feminine hygiene. Uh, you know, lots of. Uh, we're actually getting a lot of alternatives in that category. Uh, uh -huh. Supplies, I didn't, school supplies. Oh yeah. You know things like, you know, push pins, pens, um, sticky notes, notebooks, stuff that you need, but it's made the right way. Yep. Um, you know, more kitchen stuff, just soap dispensers, um, soap dishes, you know, soap sponges or sponges and rags, and um, this is a great product. It's a steel dish soap block. Instead of again plastic liquid soap, you know you can just you know kind of put this on your counter, get that dish soap, the dish brush I was telling you about, just a few swipes and it suds up really easily. Wow! And gets rid of that plastic packaging and these things last forever, so it's just really that's like, fabulous. Economical as well. I'm already thinking of some things we can uh, switch over to at the uh, Wine Earth headquarters to show people when they stop by. I love that. You know, we we're talking about floss. This is another example of this tiny little, uh, you know, again, most floss comes in plastic. This comes in a little glass vial hmm. with an aluminum top. And then you can buy just the refills. And it, literally the only thing in here is the spool. And, you know, just it works. That is really great. You know, for an everyday yeah. simple need. Um, we can swing around here. We've got uh, candles. You know, candles are notoriously got some, you know, bad ingredients. Yep. And plastic. These are glass. Cool. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, these are really popular too. Safety razors. So uh -huh. uh, instead of the big plastic razors, uh, you'll get one razor and then 
you get like 10 blades that come in this little tiny box wow. for super cheap. And you can actually then put them in this blade bank, there's a little slot there, and the company will, you send it back to the company and they recycle it and make new blades out of it. Oh, no kidding. Totally, huh. totally circular. Yep. A lot of dog supplies, you know, dog toys. <laughs> um, I bring my dog, he obviously loves this aisle. Um, I heard, I heard it's a dog friendly office. Yeah, a little too dog friendly sometimes. <laughs> but uh, it's all, it's all in good in good fun. Um, kid stuff, actually yeah. a lot of kid stuff. Uh, you know, backpacks and um, you know teethers and all sorts of stuff. And by the way, some manufacturers do send us stuff in this plastic um, yeah. because they they either have to or you know to protect the product um, in transit. We recycle all this stuff. Um, locally at the center, mm. at Charm, the Center uh, for Hard Recycling Materials. So yeah. we, we, we make sure that none of it goes to waste. Play, um, you know, some, some eco dough for kids, crayons, uh, all good ingredients. Cool. You know, these are, these are just uh, great um, plates and, and compartmentalized uh, bowls for kids huh. so the food doesn't go f flying across the room. <laughs> yeah. Pacifiers, you know, natural rubber, um, you know, more toys. Green toys, uh, all this stuff is made from 100% recycled milk jugs and, and plastic. So even though it's plastic, it's 100% recycled plastic. So it's a great way to kind of reuse what's out there. Yeah. We even have a, a Jenga set. Uh, no way. Huh. From that stuff. So very, very oh, that's cool. fun. <laughs> and... I think Jenga is a little stressful. <laughs> it is a little stressful. <laughs> um, Diapers we talked about, even jewelry. Uh, again, this is all you know, re oh, recycled, wow. upcycled stuff. Very um, cool. Yoga mats or yoga uh, uh, mat pads. Yeah. Um, or mat yoga mat uh, covers. Lots of backpacks. Tons of backpacks. Wow. Uh, colorful from you know, code epoxy, but also you know more standard school backpacks. Um, apparel from Tentree and United by Blue are kind of two brands that we really like to support. Say them again. United by Blue uh -huh. and Tentree. Tentree is cool because every time you buy something, they give you a little chip that gives you like certified, like ten trees are planted uh -huh. for every article of clothing you buy. Oh, cool! Very okay, amazing. that's great. And they're traceable and everything, so super cool. Um, yeah, just uh, it, this is all kind of apparel. We do a lot of women's. Um, Sports bras and uh, and, and compression compression leggings, you know, yeah. at, at leisure wear. Okay. Um, and then this uh, final aisle down here, we got laundry powders. Um, you know, another alternative. These actually come. So you get the first time you order, you get the you know the big aluminum can, and then you you can just buy the refills. Yep. Wow, that's great. So you know, it makes it really easy. And then this aisle is pretty dark, <laughs> but you know more dog leashes and uh, more apparel. It's really specialty. Yeah, if you journals. if you pull things over to this side, we can see. But right now, this whole left side is pretty pretty dark in yeah. the uh, camera. And we can that's great though. Can talk about, yeah, there's just some more socks and um, we have compostable. This is like. You know, if you're at a picnic or you have a big event, yep. Um, you know, it's cold cups or you know, one-time use plates, but uh, you know they are compostable. So yeah. um, some people need that access sometimes. So absolutely. So yeah, that's the uh, what do they call that? The nickel tour. That's right. That's wonderful. Thanks for that. We're actually looking to uh, expand here. As you can tell, we don't really have much more space. So uh -huh. um, as soon as we do, we'll. Be able to bring in even more good stuff so excellent yeah well listen uh let's jump into a little more light ryan and then we'll um sign off and it's been so great to visit with you and to to get the tour behind the scenes here of all these wonderful products well it's great to be able to share it with you so thanks for coming by you bet thank you and uh before we sign off here is, is there anything else you'd like to share with the audience i just uh thank you for your interest in what we're doing and uh if you have 
you know, any feedback for us, you know, we'd love to hear, uh, you know, from anyone that, that wants to share that. Um, I really appreciate, you know, everyone's uh, effort they put into, you know, helping move the needle forward. It, it really is one step at a time. Um, I just encourage you not to get stuck in the, I'm not, it's so much that I don't even know where to start, so I'm not going to even try. Like, it's, you know, one action will lead to the next one, to the next one, and a year, two years, ten years down the road, you will be shocked at how um, fun and simple this, this really is. So, you know, whether you're buying stuff on earthhero.com or, you know, locally or, you know, other online sites, I just encourage you to get curious, get interested, uh, participate, and again, any feedback for us, uh, we would love to hear it. Just reach out to us through various um, social channels um, or via our website. And thank you for all the support. Right on. That's great. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. The Why on Earth Community Stewardship and Sustainability podcast series is hosted by Aaron William Perry, author, thought leader, and executive consultant. The podcast and video recordings are made possible by the generous support of people like you. To sign up as a daily, weekly, or monthly supporter, please visit whyonearth.org backslash support. Support packages start at just $1 per month. The podcast series is also sponsored by several corporate and organization sponsors. You can get discounts on their products and services using the code WHYONEARTH, all one word with a Y. These sponsors are listed on the whyonearth.org backslash support page. If you found this particular podcast episode especially insightful, informative, or inspiring, please pass it on and share it with a friend whom you think will also enjoy it. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your support. And thank you for being a part of the Why on Earth community.